I am reminded that everything exists in a conversation and that if we can set aside our differences long enough to see the human being and focus on solutions, we can then manifest miracles together. Creating miracles is such an enormous possibility, but what type of distractions stand in the way of that? The first distraction is, of course, self-doubt. Who do I be? Am I worthy to exist? As, as Black people in America, we literally had to start a movement to convince people that we even mattered, that our children mattered. Imagine being the descendants of a people who for centuries were legally deemed two thirds less than a man. We're not talking about two friends on the, black, on the back of the bus playing the dozens and tearing each other down for the entertainment of it. We're talking about the United States Constitution and several laws derived from it indicating that your ancestors' melanin count deemed them less worthy of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that their only value politically was to add value to the votes of their slave masters, their rapists, their killers, who had every right to do their worst to people who looked like you. And as the DNA of systemic racism passes down from one generation to the next, it is no wonder that our focus might be a little off. It is no wonder that a black woman from Benton Harbor, Michigan, one of the blackest cities in America, facing a triage of the harshest attacks against our water, our economy, our people, would ask herself, why would the great banker Leigh Thompson choose me to speak at such a tremendous event? Am I worthy? Am I smart enough? Do my words matter? Who cares what I have to say? Who cares about our crumbling schools infrastructure? Who cares about the death count of our babies poisoned with lead filled bottles? Who cares that for decades, billionaires teamed up with major institutioners, institutions, governors of men and lawmakers decided that they wanted our land by any means necessary. And so they would pass policies that coerce school boards to close schools and gut our communities. When you watch people that you are taught to admire practically give your resources away, when you watch your own people listening to the demands of Lansing and Washington, when you watch your own people participate in the demise of your communities, upcharge you for poison water, and consistently deny services for the urgent needs of your people while prioritizing recreational excursions of well-to-do whites across the bridge. You can easily slip into survival mode. You can easily move into a headspace of just trying to make it through the day and forget about your life's purpose, just trying to figure out if you deserve to breathe. You run into a young man on the street and you ask him, hey, how is that? How you doing? And, and what has he been up to? And like clockwork, he says, man, I'm just trying to stay out of the way. When you see your people devalued in, in mass, your focus can get a little off. You can start to ask yourself if you're worthy. You can begin to believe that it's okay to just abandon your own homes, your own schools, and just shut it all down and run as fast as you can to the nearest white-owned institutions, hoping that they let you in. You can lose focus on your genius, your voice, your God-given right to take up state, space, but stay focused. Remember who you are. Lock arms with your brothers and your sisters and focus on your pur purpose. Get laser focused on your rights to resources. Demand that this nation pay back every dime stolen. 